So it's now the end of the fall 2018 semester. Um, I am nearly done with my research methods class. The students have just one last project about finite differences to turn in. And I thought I might check in with you at the end of the semester to talk about how the class went, how these uh, project assignments went, what it was like using Jupyter Notebooks with everything. Um, again, this was the first time I'd used both the Jupyter Notebooks in, the, in this class and uh, using my videos as the primary source material. We did not adopt a textbook. Um, we pretty much had the videos on my channel that I produced over the summer uh, and then I would follow up on those with class discussion based on questions that the students had. Um, the videos were very well received. Um, I think the students appreciated getting to see the code in action before we talked about it in class. Um, there was a lot of stuff that, that they came into class already wondering about, already wanting to ask questions about, so that led into a lot of good discussion. So I'm, I'm very happy with how that part went. Um, and then I would assign them homework based on the GlowScript codes that uh, I included with the videos. And uh, those were pretty much all completed. I think I only had a couple missing by the end of the semester. So students were very eager to jump in and try using the codes. Um, and of course, having a starter code is always better than making students code from scratch. Um, and using the Jupyter Notebooks for the projects was good. My students appreciated getting to learn Jupyter um, and they appreciated getting to have you know the, 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 the coding and writing environments together. And they enjoyed using VPython. They liked having things animate and making it easy to make things visual. The problem was putting the two together didn't quite work. Basically on my students' machines, Jupyter and VPython did not get along. They were very problematic. We had to restart the kernel basically every time that they wanted to run their code. And by restart the kernel, I mean restart it multiple times, especially on the Macintosh devices. So I had four students in the class. Three of them were on Macs. One of them was on a Windows machine. Um, the Macs had the most problems, but even the Windows machine, we had to recompile the kernel several times. That didn't happen when I was making the, uh, the initial template files. So I'm not sure what went wrong there. It, it just seems like uh, maybe VPython isn't quite ready to be placed into VPython, into Jupyter uh, reliably. So what I will probably do next time I teach the class, I'm going to stick with the Jupyter Notebooks because I think it's an important tool for them to learn how to use, but I'd probably use another graphing package that uh, behaves a little bit better, um, especially since the animation component is not really necessary at this level. They mostly need a graph. As far as the project structure went, um, I think I need to find a way to emphasize the instructions more in the template file. Most of the students just jumped straight to the code cells and ignored all of the flowery introductions that I wrote and ignored all of the pre-coding stuff that they were supposed to reflect on. So I will probably figure out some way to emphasize that more. I might not even give them separate instructions. I might just say, here is your project. It's on Blackboard as this uh, Jupyter Notebook file. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes next time around. I've got some time before the class is offered again to figure that out. So thanks for coming on this journey with me. Um, I appreciate it. I hope the early videos in this series were helpful, and I hope this video helps you maybe avoid some of the mistakes that I ran into. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.